So perhaps unsurprisingly, it's Rangers that made it through. We're off to Glasgow tonight for the first leg. I'm pretty sure the winners of this tie get into the group stages proper. But we've had plenty more going on behind the scenes. The transfer window is back open across Europe. And we received a huge bid for the Ting from Premier League Everton. 11 million up front. Rising to £17.5 million. The board jumped in and accepted it and can you blame them when that kind of money is involved we decided not to use our protest on this and keep our powder dry not just because of the sum of money involved but also we've got another young right back called Vegard Jurgensen coming through who I thought could replace the ting and we wanted to save our protest in case any more bids come in the transfer window for other stars such as the Arctic Tiger however I click continue and then another bid came in. This time it was from Wolfsburg. £12.25 million. Rising up to nearly £19 million. But little did I know that as I click continue, the fun was only just getting started. Because then Real Madrid came in with a £14 million offer. Rising to £22 million. And the Ting could not pack his bags fast enough. He's gone. For what is a Norwegian record transfer fee, it means we've lost a great player, perhaps our best player. But it means that our debts have been wiped. We had a little bit of money in the transfer coffers to go out and strengthen. And it also means that now we've got to try and progress forward with our European campaign without the ting at right back. And whilst all that's been going on in the background, we've had plenty of action on the pitch since the last episode as well. We're progressing well in the league now since the draw with Rosenborg. While we've won all of our games and other teams have dropped points, you'll see that we're 11 points clear now with only 11 games to go. So we're looking strong to retain the Norwegian Premier Division title. However, we have made a change tactically because after that 1-1 draw with Rosenborg, we played Strunt's God set next. We won the game. We needed a very late winner to be able to do so. We didn't even take the lead until halfway through the second period. The players didn't play well. Strunt's God set had an XG that was pretty close to ours. And I thought that maybe this 4-3-3, which served us beautifully last season, which we tweaked for this season and originally... I thought that maybe that was getting the best out of the players again. Well, after this game, it was about four or five games in a row where I felt we hadn't really been at our best. And we would have been lucky to pick up some of the wins that we had. So I decided to make a tactical change. And I think I may have reinvented football because we played Haugesund and we managed to beat them 10-1. Now, Haugesund are third in the league as we stand. So they are no mugs. And we were rampant in this game. We had four goals for Larson Pleem, a hat trick for Christian Pedersen. Skog van Pedersen got a couple as well. And then we beat Lillstrom 2 1. We beat Sanderfjord 4 0. We beat Start 3 0. And now I've got a major decision to make. Do I go back to the more cautious 4 3 3 for our European tie tonight? Or do I stick with this tactical change that we've made that might just be. The future of football. And so here it is. I'll talk you through it because it's pretty complex. You play four defenders across the back. And then what you do is you play four again across the midfield. Leaving two positions free for strikers. What you can also do is bring Tuborn Blindheim on during games. Play him as a target man. And this is the direction that I see football going in. You might say... That this is a little bit full circle. You're absolutely right. We've gone back to how we were playing. In the Norwegian third tier. A decade or so ago. But it's been working beautifully. We've got an attacking wing back. We've been playing Sturvold as a wide playmaker. Over on the right. Something that people in the comment section. Have been mentioning. For a couple of seasons now. And he started to pick this up pretty quickly. His training's not great at the moment. By the way. but. I think he could get better and better in that role. And we've got Kirkvold on a defend function to try and cover for Jurgensen as he bombs forward. Skogvang Pedersen is just an out-and-out get-to-the-byline winger. 
and attack the box when the ball's on the opposite flank. We've also got players that can come on and change things up. Ryan Holton can come over onto the right flank and we can play a brace of wingers. We've also got the option of when we take Skog Van Pedersen off, we've got this new player coming through, Tristan Stangerby, 18 years old. He's now scored twice in the league and got an assist. He's only made two starts, but he's appeared in nine games. And he is raw pace. And when you bring this kitten on after 60 minutes, the opposition collectively sigh. You may notice, as we're going through our bench, by the way, we've got a new signing on there. Paul Runnigan, who I know is not everybody's proverbial cup of tea, has come in as an additional midfield player. With the sale of the Ting, it means we've got young Vegard Jurgensen as our first choice right back. And he is really developing quite nicely, by the way. But he's only 16 years old. So I think he's going to have to rotate in and out of the side with Christian Burnson, who's more than accustomed playing that right full-back role. But Burnson being primarily a full-back again, Leaves us a little bit short in midfield once more. So Paul Runnigan can come in. He can play wide on the right. He can play as a striker. But he can also deputise for Bratton as a nice box-to-box -box midfielder. Or Kirk Bold as a deep-lying playmaker. And at 26 years old, he brings experience, know-how, good physicals, great mentals. And you know what? He's got some technicals that are not too shabby as well. And he is perhaps not a starting player for us, but a useful member of the squad. We could switch it back to the 4-3-3. This is going to be the away leg after all. But the 4-4-2 has been playing so well. It's what we should go with tonight. Let's go out there. Be 3-0 down after 10 minutes. All realise that I've made a huge error. And we're going to whimper our way out of Europe. <laughs> Okay, we are underway. It's the away leg, so we are at Ibrox. We're in our away kit, so we're in the red for this game. We've won ourselves an early corner. And Trondagna Bratton has just headed it wide. Down at the bottom of the screen, by the way, I've popped our bench up just to illustrate the progress I think we're making. We've lost the ting. But the signing of Runnigan means that he's on the bench now. And in previous seasons, he would have been our best player but he's joined on the bench by the likes of a promising young keeper Delmar but then going further forward Burnson capped by Norway Reinholdson key player for us last season Henriksen Roy the boy just a bench player for us this season and to Bjorn Blindheim a six foot six inch target man I think we've got some strength out there but Rangers are no mugs either most of their team are valued at between 5 and £15 million. Pounds. They've won the Scottish title for the last two seasons. So they are going to be strong. If we could score an away goal, then I would be very hopeful that we could get through. I think the linesman might just have quashed our dreams here. VAR is in play. These are usually ruled out for offside whenever they go to VAR. And it is indeed inside the opening 10 minutes. I thought we'd got that away goal. But this is exactly what I said about trying to spring their high line. Sturvold as that wide playmaker dinked a ball through. Pettersson tucked it away. But VAR ruled it out. But we've still only got 10 minutes on the clock. And the highlights, well, they've been coming thick and fast in this game. This is where I'm looking for us to just pop the ball through for a striker to run onto. Larson please picked it up, though. We're actually trying to play through them rather than go over the top of them. Either way, we've got Christian Pettersson in. He struck the ball. It's charged down. And we build again. Here's Bratton. Jawad. The highlights petered out. But we're in again. Jurgensen, the attacking wing back, has given the ball away. And this is where you'd like your DM to deal with their counter attacks. But I've decided to lay it all on the line and go old school with the 4-4-2. I am not disappointed with the start that we've made to this game. If we could snatch a 1-0 win away in Scotland, I might even go as far as to say we might have a chance in the second leg, making it through to those Champions League group stages. I've tried to read the rules to check whether we get into the Champions League group stages. It's a little bit hazy. This is certainly the last round that I can see of qualifiers before the, the group stages kick in. 
And I'm trying to play it cool here, but we've got this away goal in Europe. Sturvold has got it to Patterson. He's taken it smartly on his chest, rounded a defender. Tucked it past Andy Gorham in goal. It's probably not Andy Gorham in goal. I think it's nearly 2040 now. But we're in again, you know. And here's young Jurgensen, 16 years old, and he's playing in a Champions League qualifier. And now Sturvold's in. He's not a great finisher, Sturvold. While he's popping up on the left-hand side, I'm not sure. Maybe he's got license to roam as that wide playmaker. But we're actually looking pretty strong. We've still got these counters to try and deal with. And you know what? A couple of goals for Rangers and it's all back in the balance again. But there is Kirkvold. Further forward on the pitch now, but still serving a purpose defensively. And you know what? I think we've had a good half here. I'm even going to shout out that we're doing a good job. It's helped with the body language. Jurgensen's looking like he might not make it through past the 60-minute mark. I guess Burnson's going to come on and finish the game for us. We'll assess that at half-time. But we're coming forward again, Bratton now. Kirkvold. Played a lot better as a deep line playmaker actually in a midfield four than he was able to at the base of a midfield three. So it's definitely suited him. This is not our highlight, is it? Ross McCormack is in. Rangers look like they've been bringing back a lot of their old players. That can't be Jude Bellingham. He wouldn't do that to me. Plus, when we were at Toulouse, Jude Bellingham had just turned 30 and was at PSG. Surely you can't be at Rangers now. We'll check that at half-time as well. I'll take 1-0 at half-time because I think Rangers are posing a bit of a threat towards the end of this half. We've charged down a free kick. They're coming at us again. I tell you what, the highlights are coming thicker and faster than I would like. Kirkvold, Bratton. He's got those two front players to hit again. He's gone wide for Sturvold. Look how central he comes in that playmaker role. Makes him pretty hard to pick up. And it doesn't half open up the right-hand side of the pitch for our marauding fullback to get his way into. But Run Row has skinned the defender. And right on the stroke of half-time, we've relied on Monnier to keep our lead. I might reassess at half-time, you know. Whether this 4-4-2 is a little bit open to be away from home. Because Rangers have looked like they've been capable of scoring. And they're in again, you know. And we've had to do a little bit of last ditch defending. We're going to tell the boys that was a decent half. But we can do even better. Now we're going to get into the dressing room. See whether Jurgensen needs to come off. And whether we need to tweak our tactic to shore things up a little. Okay, we are back underway. We've brought Burnson on for Jurgensen. At only 16 years old, he can't play the volume of football that is perhaps needed of him. And he played three days ago when we were trying to rotate as many players as we could, but he was one of the ones that we needed to play. So Burnson is on for him. We're just going to pause the game, by the way, and we're going to check, is this... It is indeed Jude Bellingham, 35 years old. He's gone from PSG to Southampton. And then Rangers, the Birmingham board, did promise us when they sold him that they would one day re-sign him when we were in the Champions League. Maybe even in FM. That day never came. We're now at the 60-minute mark. I'm looking at Larson Pleem, who's on a 6.4. Not a good performance. And Roy the boy is on the bench. And has scored a couple of goals in the last few games. So maybe the boy might come on and see whether he could get us a second away goal. Skog van Pedersen raiding down the left. He's got players over. Pedersen's in. He's had two nibbles at that. Okay, the change has been made controversially. I've not gone for Roy the boy. I've gone for Blindheim. We've bought on a six foot six striker. I've changed him to a target man with attack. But he's not the slowest. He says, as he then ambles his way through, but maybe he might just offer us a little bit of something different and maybe he can get back in the box for our own set plays and help us defend those as well. We've given the ball away a little bit needlessly there, though. That's a poor effort. I think we're okay 
And we've got 20 minutes left. 1-0 is fine by me, by the way. That all-important away goal. As Monnier makes a smart stop. That can't be the highlight. We've got to have a little counter-attack here. We've gone long. Scott Van Pedersen's in. He's now got a target in the box to hit. And it's a six foot six one, but instead he's run down a blind alley. He's been challenged. This is a little bit end to end, isn't it? We've got this Munro who's been a real thorn in the side. He's been shooting from distance. He's not hurt us yet. Okay, 15 minutes to go. Runnigan is on for his European debut for us, I think. And he's gone into a five man midfield with Kurt Vol just sitting in front of the defence. That change slowed the highlights down a little bit, but it's not got us through to full time. Could we perhaps nick another one on the break? It means that Blindheim is ploughing a lone furrow up front for us. We're looking for him to just hold up the ball and then for midfielders to run forward and join him. It's not worked on that occasion though, and we've got more defending to do. We've got Forsyth coming forward. We've got Dilton. They're in though. And they've hit the post. I thought there must have been an offside there, but there wasn't. And we are living on the edge a little bit here, aren't we? We've now got two minutes to go. The corner is cleared by Kirkvold. They've struck another one that's been charged down. The ball comes in again. We've hacked it clear. And we've got four minutes of injury time to try and navigate as well. I'm not confident we're going to hold on to this, you know. I think Rangers have been a little bit unlucky. That they are not level already. We're going to check out the XG. Rangers XG has gone over one. As is over two. We should have scored again. But Rangers should also have got one. We're still into the proper highlights. We've got two and a half minutes of injury time left. We've won the ball. Keep it composed. Keep the ball. Scott Frank Pettis and Blindheim. Oh, that was not what was needed with two minutes of injury time left. And they're coming at us again. Jawar's running on empty there and they're in and they have equalised and it's Callum McLaughlin and that was some poor play by us to give away possession and the replays here they've strolled down we've got absolutely nothing challenging them and he's just played it across for a nothing more than a tap in and Rangers deserved it Maybe it was a mistake playing the 4-4-2 or maybe we should have scored a second before we let them back into the game. The midfield have not played great. Larson Pleen was a disappointment. Bernson has had an absolute shocker since he came on. And we're going to tell the boys that that was a rubbish performance. It means that we've got an away goal, but it also means we've got plenty to do when we bring them back over to the Arctic Circle. That's going to be our next episode. Join us for it to see if we can make it through to the group stages of the Champions League in our quest to be Sub-Zero Heroes.